All right, Matthew chapter 8. <clears throat> Let's see, we'll go uh, a lot of healings hmm. in this chapter. Yeah, the whole, the whole chapter is a lot of healings to like verse 17. All right. Let's go for it. Verse 1. When he came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. All right. There's the multitudes, people that probably are not disciples, but are liking what they're hearing. They're also benefiting from the ministry, you know, and uh, they're following Yahusha. So behold, a leper came to him and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you want to, you can make me clean. That's powerful. Can I say something? Yep, go ahead, please. That is that is very powerful too, in a way, because back in those days, and you see this man worshiping what they would look at another man, not knowing, you know, who he really is, which this guy obviously felt who he really was. You know, that's powerful. I mean, and it's 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 uh it's uh, dangerous too, in a way. You know what I mean? something to think about that's that's faith right there yep yahusha stretched out his hand doesn't scripture talk about yahuwah if you would stretch out your hand <laughs> right yeah stuff like that or even in the book of acts I, I could i could i could remember a prayer that was prayed that they would they prayed and they said father if you would stretch look at your enemies look upon your enemies or look upon our enemies and stretch out your hand or something like that i kind of, i remember seeing stretch out your hand in the book of acts but it just makes me think about i can't help myself but thinking about the oneness between yahoo and yahusha <laughs> you know so yahusha stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I want to be made clean. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Yahusha said to him, see that you tell nobody, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Cross references. Can you got we? It? Can we go? I yeah, gotta, let's I go gotta find them the, in Leviticus. Let's go back to the law of Moses. Yeah, I think it's. Leviticus. I want to say Leviticus. There's a law of leprosy, but what I think is interesting. 14. Interesting. Before we go there, is this fact that here we have obviously Yahusha is our high priest, right? And we're gonna read if we, if we get in there where a leper had to go before the priest to see is his leprosy legit? He had to come back. There, there's there's a whole protocol of seven days. You gotta be. Uh, quarantine you got to come back did it spread is it fully covering you are you 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 have to cover your lip all this stuff we'll, we'll wind up reading about and i think it's amazing that here he comes before yahusha our high priest and because being a leper obviously is not easy it depends on on which way because there's there's a leper where i think if you're fully covered then you're able to come back into the camp but if it's still spreading or something like that you have to stay outside so who i don't know at which point this guy is at if he's still kind of you're still looked at off um, but I think it's just beautiful. He's coming to the high priest and then here Yahushua says, go and show yourself to the priest. And he was just standing before him. He's just standing before our intercessor and his, his, to me, it's a prayer that the leper has saying, if you're willing, I know you can, I know you can. I just, is it your will? And Yahushua in his, he's so tender and mercy when I see him do all these healings. And he's just like, I could just see his heart for the people. Like I am, and I want to make you clean. And then obey the Torah still. Like he still says, obey the Torah. Don't, don't glorify me. Obviously, he's the word, so it's still glorifying him. So he's like, go obey the word. So in a sense, it's still glorifying himself because he's saying, obey the word. I am the word before you. Go do what you have to do. And uh, so it's just a beautiful, it's, it's so beautiful and powerful. Is it there? And, and I'm sure leopards were getting cleansed after the death and resurrection of Messiah. Mm -hmm. Healings and, everything. and I would expect that Messiah is expecting the apostles to encourage those people to also follow the law of Moses. 
and do the same thing until 70 AD when the temple was destroyed. Then you can't really go to the priests and you can't do what the law requires because there's no temple. Just like in the book of Daniel, there was no temple. Daniel wasn't going to the temple. Daniel wasn't, you don't see Daniel going to the Levites and things like that because there was no temple. So co proper context. So what, why do I bring this up? Because Christianity teaches that, or part, some Christians, depending if you're a dispensationalist or if you're a um, replacement theology, depend, depends which uh, side of the coin you're on on that. But both, both of those doctrines are demonic. They're, 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 they're demonic. They're heresies, okay? But uh, a lot of Christianity teaches that the old covenant was done away with the, 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 the sacrifices, the offerings, the Levitical priests and the old Testament's done away with after the resurrection of Messiah or after the death, depending on who you talk to. Some will say after the death, after the blood was shed or after the resurrection. But here's the truth. After the resurrection, the temple wasn't destroyed yet. The Levitical priests are still the Levitical priests and the temple is still the temple. And even in the book of Acts, you'll find even Paul still keeping some of the requirements, the, the offerings and sacrifices, ending a vow and shaving his head and doing things like that, which are required by the law of Moses after the death and resurrection of Messiah. So not only do you have the Messiah encouraging law observance and obedience while he's living on the earth, but you have the same law, observance, and obedience happening after his death and resurrection. So please, if you've ever heard that the law was done away with at the cross or at the death, the crucifixion or the resurrection, just know that is not true at all. The Messiah never promoted that. Never. I just, I just started uh, the last teaching, Matthew chapter 7, that we just did before this one. Starts off with, if you listen to everything that I said, and it's, that starts with this Matthew series started in Matthew chapter 5. One of the first things that the Messiah was teaching was he did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. And then he says, obey. He says, teach and do even the least of the commandments, and you'll be called greatest, great in the kingdom of heaven. So I just want to make that clear. I'm going to make it clear every opportunity I get reading the New Testament passages. Every opportunity I get, I'm going to try to throw in how the New Testament promotes law of Moses observance and obedience. It promotes law-abiding citizens. Law-abiding citizens. <laughs> law that makes citizens. sense. I mean, if you're going to be part of a kingdom, you might want to observe the law of that kingdom amazing we talk about that so naturally in the natural world and our natural kingdoms and yet when it comes to you as kingdom it's a whole nother story it's like yahuwah started a new king that's what christianity basically teaches that god had a different kingdom different set of rules. before the death and the resurrection of messiah and then after the death and resurrection of messiah it's a different kingdom than the old kingdom that's a lie it doesn't make any sense at all in any way shape or form that's what you call dispensation theology and replacement theology. Both of them teach a different kingdom. A different legislation. You know, a different legislation. God, yeah. God's standard is less than man because we wouldn't have thieves in our house, but yet thieves and murderers and all these unrepentant people are allowed in the house. But we aren't even that way. Yep. Yep. You got some uh, Leviticus? 13. Cross yeah, reference. Yeah, yeah, Leviticus chapter 13. 13. Um, it's like practically the entire thing, so I don't know where you want to go. Let's read the whole thing. Let's go. All righty. Might as well get the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You Let's want go. me to read it? Or? We need to have context for what Messiah is talking about mm -hmm. to really drill the idea that the Messiah is promoting the law of Moses. So I don't want to skip over this. Mm -hmm. you, want me to, you want me to read? Yeah, go ahead. 14 okay. is in there too. Just, just FYI. 14 too, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll let Ezzy read 14. Milo cool read 13. And tell me wherever to stop. Yep. And I'll... Yahuwah spoke. So this is Yahuwah. Spoke to Moshe and Aaron saying, when a man shall have in the skin of his flesh arising a scab or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like a plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest 
or unto one of his sons, the priest. Okay, which we don't have today. We don't have, we, we do, somewhere around, somewhere in the earth, there's Aaron's sons, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know who they are, okay? We got people who claim that they are. I'm not sure. But here's, here's what's more true, is they're not operating in their covenant role as priests in Jerusalem and in the temple. They're not in their proper role. So today it doesn't apply to us. Here's a part of the law of Moses that doesn't apply to us currently because of the context that we are in right now. Okay? No temple, no role. So it doesn't apply. Okay? Not because it's been done away with, but because it's been put on pause, just like it has in the past. All right, I'll do a quick synopsis. Egypt, Israel got delivered out of Egypt into the wilderness, got the law of Moses, crossed over into the promised land, took the tabernacle into the promised land, into Jerusalem. Uh, that's where the Levitical priests from that point forward were doing all of their roles as the cleansing and the sacrifices, the offerings and all the things that they were in charge of doing. Then the temple was made. Then you got some Israelites going to Assyrian captivity. And then eventually you have some going to Babylonian captivity. That's where you get the book of Daniel. And Daniel is under the King Nebuchadnezzar, a Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar. He's under a Gentile king in exile outside of the land of Israel, away from the temple, away from Jerusalem, unable to practice a lot of the a lot of the commandments regarding the temple and the levites and the sacrifices and offerings that were required in the law of moses why was he unable to do it because of the context of their where uh the situation that they're in in exile so that's why you read the book of daniel you you're not going to see a lot of the um laws and commandments that are required for the levitical priests in the temple in the book of daniel so then you fast forward, go to Messiah. During the time of Messiah, the, some, of the, some of the people came back from Babylonian captivity, the uh, southern kingdom of Israel, Judah and Benjamin, some Levites, and then obviously you got whatever other Le Israelites want to sojourn and live with them and join them in their restoration, if you want to call it. During the time of Messiah, there is a temple. There are plenty of synagogues. They're in the promised land. So the Levites are in their role. They got the priests. They got the high priests all in their positions, okay? Corrupt with man-made traditions and everything like that. But nonetheless, they're in their appropriate God-given, Yahuwah-given, Yahuwah-ordained role during the time of Messiah. Messiah dies, resurrects, and then a couple years later in 70 AD, the temple is once again ransacked, destroyed, and it has not been rebuilt since then. So this whole time from 70 AD till now, we are not able, it's a long, it's a longer period of like the Daniel period. It's a way longer period, but it's not because it's been done away with, but because of the context and the situation that Israel is in, we are unable to practice these things. However, we want to get educated on what the Messiah was teaching and what the Messiah was telling this person to do after he got cleansed from leprosy. Now, we'll say we have the high priest that we can go to, Yahusha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, verse 3, and the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and in sight not be deeper than the skin, and the hair of not be turned white, then the priest shall shut up, uh, shut him up or quarantine him um, that has the plague seven days. And the priest shall look on him on the seventh day. And behold, if the plague in his sight be at stay is the same and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven more days, seven more days of quarantine. Verse six. And the priest shall look on him again the seventh day. And behold, if the plague be somewhat dark and the plague spread not in the skin, 
the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is but a scab, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab spread... Pause. I mean, let's talk about this quarantine. Can we apply this part today? Do we need a Levitical priesthood and a temple to practice a quarantine process? No, I don't think so. We, you know, what is unclean is still unclean. That hasn't changed. Christianity will teach you otherwise. Christianity will teach you that what used to be unclean is now clean. Pork is now clean. Shrimp is now clean. Leprosy, for some reason, is now, I guess, is clean as well. But no, we don't teach that. We don't preach that because that's not consistent with what Scripture teaches. So in this assembly, and anybody who should be observing Scripture and Torah, we would consider the uh, a sickness, the skin disease of leprosy as something that is unclean and something that requires a quarantine process. So what happens if we get somebody in our assembly who has leprosy? What's the application? How do we handle that situation as Torah observant, as a Torah observant assembly? Sounds cruel. It sounds cruel. It sounds, but this is the process. The person is quarantined until healing. Am I, am I wrong? We got to finish the whole thing. I know, but so far, I'm just saying, can we just pause mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and we got to uh, absorb, think, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I want to read the whole chapter and then we got to go back. Mm -hmm. So right now there seems to be a quarantining process, which is something that we should, we should practice. It, may I say something? Go ahead. If you think about it, hospitals do this. Yuhu is very, very intentional. He, he is a doctor. He is a physician. So he cares not just about the individual health, but he is a, he is a promotion of public health as well. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have this skin disease spreading, you have to consider your community, mm -hmm. okay? You have to consider, is this something that could spread to the community? What, what does this look like? So, and there is this quarantine process. And, and nowadays, hospitalizations do the same thing. If you have certain sicknesses, you are quarantined. Why? Because they need to contain that disease or that sickness, find out what it is, see if it's going to spread to the community. Why? Because we don't want it to ransack everybody else. And then you have, you know, the procedure. So it's still... We still do this in, in, in a sense And today. not just leprosy. Maybe leprosy is the English word that's being used here, but who knows? What if this is just a general skin disease? Yeah, it's a skin rash that comes on, the skin trying to... Leprosy is not the only skin disease that can be spread through contact. I'm sure. Chicken pox? <laughs> I don't think you want to... You, you don't want to be around hugging and rubbing up on somebody who's got chicken pox, right? So there's other skin, there's other skin diseases that are also can be passed on. And this is something we ought to practice a quarantining, a health sanitary quarantining process until the person is healed and cleansed from that. Seems Yahuwah ordained to me. Mm -hmm. Ezzy, your hand was up. I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> I put it back down because I think my question is going to be answered, but um, I was going to say, tying it back to chapter eight, if he's supposed to be quarantined, you know, it sounds like the, the high priest may have fallen short of Torah because he's not quarantined. He's just out roaming around coming to Messiah. Um, but I think maybe there may be some justification for that later on in Leviticus. But that's yeah, I guess my question would be, does quarantine mean that they're, they're in a specific place that they're not allowed to leave? Or was this in reference to just not allowed in like the temple and and things like that? I mean, it says shut him up, so I don't know. That's true. That's true. That's a good point. That's an interest. That's interesting. That's interesting. We'll go back into that when we get back into Matthew. We'll look. We'll look into that again. But um, go ahead. Continue with Leviticus. Um, I think seven. But if the scab spread, so this is after 14 days, but if the scab spread much abroad in the skin and after that he has been seen of the priest, verse 7, for his cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again, verse 8. And if the priest see, behold, the scab spreads in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. So apparently this guy did have some spreading of this, of this the skin rash, the skin disease. Verse 9. 
when the plague of, pre of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him. And behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising. Now that's specific. Mm -hmm. Those are specifics. Mm -hmm. There's a specific kind of skin disease. Mm -hmm. It's not broad. It's not just using the word leprosy. This is giving you details, so I, it definitely makes sense that it probably is leprosy. If I'm not mistaken, it, that seems like that's how it works. Mm -hmm. It is an 11. It is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and the leprosy covers all the skin of him that has the plague from his head even to his foot. He shall not isolate him? Uh, verse 11. Uh, I'll start with verse 9. I mean, can we absorb that? Can we kind of. So let me it? go 9 to 11 again, because it breaks it up a little bit. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then, how, then he shall be brought. Okay, so the first section is you start seeing the scab in this rash. Right. And you have this 14 It could be days. anything. You don't know what it is. It could be anything. Yeah. But you, he's got something. Yeah. So that's the first part. This part is saying when the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him. Behold, if the rising be white, and it has turned his hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising. So this is all these signs that you're seeing. Swelling. Mm -hmm. flesh swelling it is it is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh and the priest shall pronounce him unclean and he shall not shut him up for he is unclean so these are saying i don't need to do the quarantine to figure this out you meet these this criteria you don't need to be quarantined you're unclean this this is definitely leprosy because you meet these things quarantines may be a middle process mm -hmm. maybe uh we're not sure see where you're at mm -hmm. it's not chronic it's not that severe. And then there must be another situation for what is severe and what is already fully a problem. Yeah, because in verse 2, it says there is some type of rising. There's a scab. There's a bright spot. Um, and, now, and that's where that whole quarantine, they're trying to figure it out. Uh, ver do you want to stop and pause? Nope. Okay, verse 12. And if, the, if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin and the leprosy cover all of the skin, um, from him that has the plague, from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looks, then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy has covered all of his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that has the plague. It is all turned white, he is cleaned. Okay, so it's all, it's, you, this is what I think about when I think of this. I think of, there's, um, they call it, the, the, I forget the name of the disease, but let's say you, you can really definitely go. Villa what? <laughs> vitiligo. Yeah, vitiligo. It's literally, you ever seen those white blotches on like, you can more see predominantly on a black person. And then some of them literally just completely turn, even though they're, they're quote unquote black, they turn white. That's what I think of when I hear, when I hear this, the entire skin has completely finished. Mm -hmm. It's all done. It's all covered. So it's like the plague is no longer, it can't spread. So you're considered clean because it's, it's done spreading. That's kind of interesting. How I see that. For all me. right. Um, and it says, okay, so verse 13, then the priest shall consider, behold, if the leprosy has covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce, uh, he shall pronounce him clean that has a plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. But when raw flesh appears in him, he shall be unclean. Mm -hmm. So it's like this continuation of this plague versus it's stopped. It's, it's done. The raw flesh, I would say the skin is opening up. Mm -hmm. You start seeing. The insides making holes, you know, and exposing blood and mm. things like green, that. Green, green. Yeah. Mm. 15. It's uncovered. It's like uncovering the nakedness of your flesh. Mm. <laughs> Literally. Verse 15. And the priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean. For the raw flesh is unclean. It is leprosy. Yeah, you see, this word leprosy is being used real loosely, I think. Mm -hmm. It is. The word... Leprosy is probably not the greatest word to be using because leprosy is like one kind of a skin disease. You know what I mean? I think this word leprosy is probably more broad. By skin disease, probably just say skin disease everywhere we see leprosy. Mm -hmm. um, verse. Because <laughs> think about it. I, it doesn't make sense to me that le what we know to be leprosy, if leprosy spreads all over the body 100%, you don't pr pronounce somebody clean because leprosy is 100% all over the body. 
That's why I was reading that verse. I, I didn't understand. I'm like, why is it? Why is it saying if the the whole body is in verse um verse twelve? If if the leprosy breaks out all over the skin and the leprosy covers all the skin of the infected person from his head even to his feet, as far as it appears to the priest, then the priest shall examine him. Behold, if the leprosy has covered all of his flesh, he he shall pronounce him clean of the plague. Do you guys know of anybody? I mean, does that make sense to y'all? It doesn't make sense to me. So I have an example. Um, I mean, I'm 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 uneducated on leprosy, but from what I understand, what? leprosy me? is not good. And if that covers your whole entire body, I would still think it's not you're not healed. So my example or experience is when I had eczema. So it started out being. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, but before you go to a different skin disease, can we? Well, can we? Can we? She's real quickly. Going, she's going a skin. Well, I'm still. It's an example for yeah. what you were saying. Okay. Something spreading through the body. So it started out as a small rash or an infection where the skin was swollen, like it's explaining here. Mm -hmm. And you know, nobody thought anything of it. Just a little small rash, but then it ended up spreading to the whole body. At that point, when I first went to the doctor about this small rash. They couldn't really, it's just a rash, whatever. We don't know what it is. But once it spread through my whole body, they were able to diagnose it. So I don't know if that helped, but it wasn't until it spread over that they could, you know, pinpoint, okay, this is exactly what it is. But when it was in a small local area, they really couldn't, they didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. So they somewhat followed the protocol because they sent me away. And then, you know, a few days later, a couple weeks later, it spread everywhere. So, and it was just eczema, not leprosy. Okay. So what I'm trying to say with this verse is I don't think leprosy is a good word to be used in this particular passage verses 12 and 13, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead. Uh, so leprosy says it's a chronic, curable, infectious disease, mainly causing skin lesions, which is what it's talking about, and nerve damage. Leprosy is caused by infection with the bacterium Mycobacterium leprae. It mainly affects the skin, eyes, nose, and peripheral nerves. So it has skin lesions. So that, that's uh, the signs of leprosy are painful ulcers, skin lesions, um, so on and so forth. Here is a picture. I'm going to screen share my screen. Here's what I find on Google as far as leprosy. Losing fingers, eye issues. I mean, this is this is not this is not this is not a joke. This thing like eats eats your body up. Look at this guy's fingers. Gone. Your body parts are literally like rotting. It's yep. like, like a, in a building, like how it's mold and mildew. That's kind of happening to you. Smell, it makes you smell bad and your body parts are falling off. Really so, the question, so the question I have is if leprosy is 100% all over your body, are you clean now because it spread 100%? I'm trying to make mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sense of Leviticus chapter. I think Leviticus chapter 13, verse 12 and 13, and probably in other places in this chapter, is using in the in our English translations. Unless I'm un uneducated about leprosy. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I think leprosy is the wrong wrong word to be using for verses 12 and 13. I think we should be calling that might be a different type of skin, skin, uh, a skin disease. I, I could see this, this being more of a skin disease, like, like as was just saying, or no, the one that you were saying about, uh, a white, yeah, you know, yeah. the whole skin turning white. And once the whole body is white, then it's over like that particular. So then we can say skin disease. Cause you're, when you, that's when what you I'm eat... saying. Skin disease. Can we just yes. say skin disease? Mm -hmm. Unless somebody in our assembly right here is educated on leprosy and can tell us that, if leprosy, I mean, if leprosy spreads 100% on the body and you're clean, why is the leopard 
uh, the, the person with leprosy go into Yahusha to ask for healing? Why not just wait until the leprosy spreads 100 percent? You don't know if that would, if that would be the case, though. I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying to think critically right now. No, no, no. I mean, if like, leprosy was something that once it spreads 100 percent to your body, you're good. I mean, you're you're clean now. What would be the point of asking for healing? That's what I'm saying. You don't know if that if you're going to get to that point. That's not guaranteed. I don't want to get to that point. No, you don't understand what I'm saying. Not all of the skin disease is going to go to that point where you're clean. Some people are lepers for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Like they have these, they, it's a constant infectious disease where you're constantly getting boils and stuff like that mm -hmm. versus this skin disease. He's saying, okay, you no longer have open boils. There's no sores. Your skin entirely complains pigment, pigmentation. It has spread but you're clean because there's no more raw flesh. There's no more scabs. It's, it's that skin disease. That's what I'm saying. It's a it's different done. skin disease. Mm -hmm. That's my whole point mm -hmm. right now. My whole point is to say that verses 12 and 13 and probably some other verses in chapter 13, leprosy is probably not a good word to be using. It's probably more generic. It's probably more, it's probably more broad and it's probably a different type of skin disease. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm trying to say. Because gotcha. we're talking about a, a somebody with leprosy that just came to Yahusha for healing. Mm -hmm. And we're reading Leviticus chapter 13 for a reason mm -hmm. to try to make sense of this. So what I'll say is someone with skin disease yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, also, if it helps, just last little point, nugget. In verse 2 uh, of 13, it does say uh, uh, something like a leprous infection. So it does, it does say like a leprous infection and then later goes deeper. Yeah, because yeah. the thing you're trying to because they're not out sure what, what it is. Yeah, exactly. You're trying to figure out sure is this is. leprosy? Is this a skin? And disease? leprosy might be like probably one of the worst kind of skin diseases you can get, probably. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like we don't want it. We they think of the worst, hope for the best. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. That's that's all. I, mm -hmm. I heard that recently. Like, mm -hmm. go ahead. Gotcha. I guess verse sixteen. I'll start out. All right, sixteen. Or if the raw flesh turn again and be changed unto white, he shall come unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the plague be turned white, then the, the, then the priest shall pronounce him clean that has the plague, he is clean. So it's like it takes this course, basically, mm -hmm. okay? Verse 18, the flesh also, in which even in the skin thereof was a boil, and is healed, and in the place of the boil there be a white rising, or a bright spot, white or somewhat reddish and it be showed to the priest and if when the priest sees it behold in the sight lower than the skin and the hair thereof be turned white okay mine says if its appearance is deeper than the skin yeah, so but, it's like yeah, an indentation mm -hmm. and the hair thereof be turned white the priest shall pronounce him unclean it is a plague of leprosy broken out in the boil but if the priest look on it and behold there is no white hairs therein and it not be lower than the skin or deeper than the skin, but somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. Again, we have to figure this out. Yep. And if it spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. Think about a plague, like just the word plague. It's a spreading spread, of something. something spread. Yeah, it's a spreading. Um, I think anything that can be spread airborne or physical touch is something that Yahuwah created Zoom platform <laughs> for you to fellowship with us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no physical fellowship going on. Unless I'm in the spirit and I'm feeling I have the ability to cleanse you through the Ruach HaKadosh and through the power of Yahuwah, I'm going to physically so. visit you so I can physically lay hands on you and pray for you. Other than that, we're not physically hanging out. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to be quarantined for a little bit until we figure out what's going on and you can log on zoom and fellowship with us. <laughs> All right. Verse 23. But if the bright spot, can you turn the AC? But if the bright spot stay in, in his place and it doesn't spread, it is a burning boil and the priest shall pronounce him clean. 24. Or if there be any flesh in the skin, whereof there is a hot burning and the quick flesh that burns have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or white, then the priest shall look upon it and behold, if the hair in the bright spot be turned white and the sight be deeper than the skin, it is leprosy broken out. It is a skin disease broken out of the burning. 
Wherefore the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It, uh, 25. It is the plague of skin disease. 26. But if the priest look on it and behold, there is no white hair in the bright spot and it's not lower than the skin, but somewhat dark, the priest shall shut him up. I'll g give me one second, Armani. Shall shut him up seven days and the priest shall look upon him the seventh day and it is spread much abroad in the skin. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy or skin disease. Amani has a, a question for me. Yes, I have a question. Oh, let me go to 28, he go said. Hold 28. on. Um, and if the bright spot stay in his place and spread not in its skin, but somewhat dark, it is a rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is an inflammation of the burning. Okay. Okay, could we could we be using like um, maybe today's terms instead of thinking maybe leprosy is probably an in, is infection of the skin because how it was talking about the burn and how it turns white that usually means that you have an infection breaking out. So could leprosy mean like you have an infection? I would say yeah. infection. Mm -hmm. I like using the word infection. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's skin and uh, some type of skin infection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, yeah, I like being more broad with it because I think in this chapter, we're talking about different types of infections. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out, yeah. Already, I think we went through a few different kinds. And it all pretty much has the same protocol, right? So if you're looking and you see that the, the hair's turned white and it's deeper, it's, I think it's called sub, uh, what's the word for it? Subdermal or something like that? Subcutaneous? Like, sub Containing sure I'll use that one. It's <laughs> like underneath the skin, then you know it's and, you got and some it's nurses in this. <laughs> and it spreads. You, you want to pause it? Because I gotta um give me one second. And it spreads, then you know, okay, now it's spreading, it's a plague, you have leprosy or you have the skin disease. Um, so we'll pause. Where does she read number? All right. Um Armani, if you could uh bring up that that passage again about uh Miriam. Bring up that point real quick a little nugget and the point that you um, brought up about it okay it's in numbers 12 numbers 12 10 sorry Is it 12, 10? yeah numbers 12 10 okay so Miriam was talking about Moshe. I can't find it anymore. Where is it? Yep, number 1210. You got it. Okay. Talking about Moshe. I can't see it. <laughs> Murmuring and complaining. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay. He was, she was talking about Moshe and um, y'all put, do you want me to read it? Or? No. You don't have to read it. We, we see it right here. Verse 10, when the cloud departed from, from above the tent, Miriam became leprous as snow. Then Aharon looked at Miriam and she was leprous. And what was the point that you had brought up about this? What was the relation? That with infection, um, you have to, if you leave an infection, you would usually, you're, like if you leave it, it will fall off automatically. Like if you have gangrene or something um, or frostbite, it will just fall off. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know what else I was trying to make with that. You brought and, up, you brought up verse twelve about the stillborn uh, baby turning. In uh, verse twelve, uh, Aaron says, uh, "Please do not let her be as one dead when coming out of its mother's room, womb with our flesh half consumed." So that's what you were talking about, leaving her. I guess leaving her out in the wilderness and giving it time to to fester and her limbs to fall off or you know your limbs can fall off and i think you were trying to relate it to the whole clean because once once the limb is gone the infection is stopped that's the point that you were making or not <laughs> thank you i honestly i don't remember forgive me because you guys are recording i'm Put so you on sorry the spot. <laughs> she forgot everything <laughs> that's all right that's all right well it, it is related though right because you who are, because now here her, her skin is turning, right? So, and she became leprous. So they have this Torah 
as to what happens to a leper. You, Miriam's a prophetess, let's say one. So she, she, she is a prophetess. She's very um, influential in the camp. She is obviously the sister of the high priest and of, of Moshe. And so here she gets leper, leprous. And now the thing is, the fear is she's going to have to be quarantined. She becomes unclean. She quarant this, this, we, you know, she's not just in the middle of the camp doing her thing. No, she has to leave. And for seven days. For seven days. Now, what's interesting about this is Yahuwah only keep caps it at seven days because he winds up healing her. He winds up bringing her, you know, her back. She doesn't have to go back and forth this seven days and the 14 days because he did this directly to her. And it's a, it's a pun, a quick punishment, basically. Um, and she doesn't remain a leper, but, uh, but yeah, it's definitely related to, she got this, you can see the skin disease that came on her and it's like, don't leave her like this. You who are, please don't, don't let her be consumed by this. Numbers 12, 14, Yahuwah said to Moses, if her father had been, had but spit in her face, shouldn't she be ashamed seven days? Mm. Let her be shut up outside of the camp seven days, shut up outside of the camp. Outside the camp mm -hmm. i mean this is the wilderness right mm -hmm. so they're traveling and everyone's setting up tents mm -hmm. i guess that will be considered the camp right mm -hmm. wherever the tents are set up and there has to be i don't know an imaginary border of some sort there's mm -hmm. there's definitely some type of a border line and she would have to be outside of that border line where the tents are all set up What's the application? If we're assembling together, which we're, we're not, only me and my wife are here. We don't have other people yet in this physical assembly. We're online, so this wouldn't apply. Good thing, back then they didn't have Zoom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when you're shut out, you're not fellowshipping. You must feel lonely. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At least now we got phones, we got video conferencing. There's still a way you can still be involved, you know? But uh, let her be shut up outside the camp seven days, and after that she shall be brought in again. Miriam was shut up outside of the camp seven days, and the people didn't travel until Miriam was brought in again. Afterward, the people traveled from Hazaroth and encamped in the wilderness of Paran. All right. As a little side note, we had conversation, so I decided to record that real quick. But I want to do something else. I wanted to share a list of contagious skin diseases. Rashes that are considered by many physicians to be contagious are as follows. Some of these I never heard of before in my life. Mol molluscum contagiosum. And they say this one is viral. All right. Impetigo, bacterial. Herpes, my goodness, herpes simplex types one and two viruses. All right, this is, I know like, uh, for example, blisters, cold sores, don't share the same cup, don't share the same spoon, don't kiss, don't, <laughs> if somebody, no, seriously, like, I've heard even like if somebody has herpes and they kiss their baby, like, you got to watch out who kisses your babies and stuff, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> it's serious stuff i get cold sores i think it was passed on from my parents but you know what i'm saying like you don't know you gotta <laughs> you gotta be careful who's touching your kid who's kissing your kids um rash okay rash is very generic caused by neisseria meningitis 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 Meningitis, thank you very much. It's bacterial. Yeah, why not? Rash and blisters that accompany shingles, herpes zoster virus, ringworm, fungal infection. What's this? S scabies? Scabies. An itch mite. That sounds great. Chicken pox, viral. Measles and rubella viral these are the ones i'm real concerned about the viral ones bacterial ones are not not cool either because i mean you know if we're having meals together and we're at the table with one another and you're passing things on right 
I mean, that's that's pretty risky. But the viral one to me is like very, very, very risky. What's this? Pitri Pitriasis rosea viral cellulitis. I think we talked about that. Bacterial lymphagitis, bacterial. Interesting, they didn't mention uh, leprosy. Anyway, just wanted to go through a list. Yeah. Um, and we went to Leviticus 13, verse 28. This is a long chapter. If you so from there it goes to men and women and then it goes to garments being infected of garments. That's the next place that it's going. Yeah, it says skull on the head or on the beard is from 29 to 37. Verse 38, it says bright white spots on the skin. Again, verse 38 and 39. Baldness on the head, verse 40 to 44. Verse 45, life of the person with skin disease, verse 45 to 46. Infections in garments, clothes, or leather, 47 all the way on. So we'll stop there. So since I'm balding, I'm clean? Yeah, you got to be. <laughs> you got to be outside the camp. <laughs> I have no idea what those, I will have to read those chapters. I have no idea where it's going. I highly doubt that. Context. I highly doubt that. That's that's uh, no. They were bald. No, said, the the prophet was bald. It was that Elijah that sent the bear out to those kids. No, it said you're clean. Yeah. If you're bald, you're clean now. Oh, you're clean? Is that mm -hmm. what it is? Yeah, that's what it read. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we'll end we'll end there. Uh, because that was a lot. Chapter 14, also, right? Ezzy, you were gonna read 14. I, I didn't know 13 went all the way to 59 verses. Uh, that was a leprosy 14. study right there. Yeah. Uh, chapter 14, it says purification of diseased skin. I'm sure this is the, this is where Yahushua was telling them to do the Moses thing. Um, verses one to seven is about the uh, going to the priest. Purification. Let's do that. Ezzy, go ahead and read, read some of uh, 14 for us. Uh, one to seven? Yeah, let's start with and that. Ye and Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, this shall be the Torah of the leper for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the Kohen and the Kohen shall go out of the camp and the Kohen shall look and see if the leper is healed in the leper. Can if we the pause for a second? Is healed in the leper. Yeah. Real quick, that answers our question. It says, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp and shall look and behold if the plague of, of plague of leprosy has been healed. So when he sent him out, he shut him out. That was that quarantine. So the priest has to now come to, he's not even able to come back to the camp to the priest. The priest has to go to him and, and check on him. Just oh man, snap. That just showed Yahusha doing the Torah. In the scripture right there elaborate break it down brother come on come on use right, he, so, use more okay, words he told, he, he told him to go see the priest right yes so that is a command that we just found in Le, what was it leviticus 14 so yahusha is obeying the command he is telling him to do it as well yep. Torah being used in the new testament absolutely now what now what Yep, exactly. That's what we're saying, right? That's why we. That's why I wanted to read this. Part of it is to show, like, we could have just said, "Oh yeah, read Leviticus thirteen and 14, and we could have kept going with Matthew. Yep. But I want to read it to get the audience who's listening to this recording. We got to get into it. Like, if if you're new to Torah, or if you're a Christian watching this video, and you're reading Matthew, you know, chapter eight, it might be important to go back into the. Old Testament and read it and not just skip over it because your pastor yeah. said it's been done away with. And, and also to see why, why did he tell him to do that? And now we just showed you why. Yeah. Why, 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 why would he do it? Derail. So that, that also answered. Because it's question. Torah. It's a command. It's Torah. It's a command, right? Instruction. Yahusha was sinless and perfect, right? He had to obey 
the law of Moses unto death, right? Hallelujah. He had to be obedient. He had to fulfill all righteousness. When, when he uh, was getting immersed by John, he said, I must do this to fulfill all righteousness. He needed to make sure he was 100% righteous on earth in order to be able to be who he is and do what he did. His blood being able to cleanse us and him being a high priest uh, in the order of Melchizedek, right? All that stuff. So if he had to be perfectly sinless, Torah observant, this would be something that he would promote rather than just saying, oh, He's cleansed from uh, he had lep leprosy. I cleansed them. Okay, that's it. It's all you know. You're good. Go go back he to your house. Torah. Don't tell the priests. Just just go back to your normal. Go no. He said, don't tell anybody yet. Go to the priest because that's the protocol. The priest is the yep. first person that needs to get give the green light. So wow, that's really good, Derail. Good catch. He didn't Ezzy. break Torah. He didn't break the protocol. Yep, Ezzy. You had something. Yeah, I was just going to say, does that answer the question that he should have still been shut up or outside of the camp instead of just free flowing, you know, since it's been declared that he is leprous? Where were they? Was he free flowing? Where were they at? I mean, it just says that he came, they were on the mountain um, or Yahuwah came down from the mountain. And large crowds followed him, and then this leper came. Which mountain were they at? Those would be my questions. Where location are they at? What city are they in? You know, how, how like, what, because the scripture we have in Leviticus is outside of the camp. Well, there's no more camps when you're in the promised land. So what would be the border now? That, th those are my questions. What's the application now that you're in the land of Israel with the temple in Jerusalem is out of the land, meaning out of Jerusalem, like miles, miles, like outside of the promised land, or is it outside of a certain vicinity from the temple? Maybe. That would make sense. Maybe, maybe outside of where the temple is or, or where people fellowship, center. where people gather yeah. to fellowship and things like that. So because I think this is after they left. They left and went by boat and then came to this mountain. I don't know where they are specifically. I think it might be in maybe six or five. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess I'll, I'll look that up later. <laughs> you want me to continue? 14. Let's see. The other leper, healing leper, was in Luke chapter 5, verse 12. It says, while Jesus, sorry, while Yahushua, my bad, while Yahushua was in one in one of the towns, see, it's very generic, still broad here. A man came to him who was covered with leprosy. So we don't know where he's at, but I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume that, uh, you know, they were keeping the protocol. This guy was most likely not allowed to assemble, but being that he was cleansed, he went, which, which again would be, it's like, is that break? Is it breaking Torah? You know, to 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 go to the priest rather than letting the priest come to you. If you're cleansed, you're cleansed. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So I don't know. Those are just my thoughts. You know, it's kind of it's 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 not. It's almost like Yahusha letting his disciples pick grain on the Sabbath. It's like, is that really breaking the law? Is it not? No, it's not, right? But it's like, it's like close, but it's not. So this case is like, Yahusha's making them do, I'm sure it frustrated the priest. Let me put it that way. It frustrated, like it, it really annoyed the priest because it's like, wow, this guy's healed. But you made this guy who's supposed to be quarantined outside of the camp, you made him come to me without my approval first. Now, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, just let me finish what I'm saying. Instead of talking in my ear, you're messing me up. So instead of having the priest go to the, le to the person with leprosy and then say, you're good to come in, Yahusha tells the le person with leprosy who had leprosy at this point to go in to let the priest know, I'm good. So I'm sure it kind of frustrated the, the priest who, who want to be by the book and by the letter. 
It's like, what are you doing here? You know what I mean? I'm healed. The man Yahusha healed me. And it's like, what? I'm sure it's like, no, he didn't. Let me see. You know, and then to find out, wow, it's legit. You are healed. So it's like, I, I wonder if it caused frustration. You know, a little frustration, a little mix, mix of feelings, depending on who the priest is, right? If the priest is a righteous man and knows the Torah and is very sensitive to the Ruach, he, I'm sure he would look at this man and be like, wow, praise, praise Yahuwah. You've been healed. Let me go talk to this man, Yahusha. Let me go meet this man. But if he's a stiff-necked, stubborn, right, trying to be by the letter but don't, not by the spirit type of priest, he's going to be upset. He's going to be frustrated. You got this guy who I quarantined, and you have him coming in here without me going out there to approve of him to come back in? You know, those are the thoughts that I'm, I'm going through. Go ahead. Well, now I wonder, because two in and of itself is kind of two and three together is interesting, because it says, this shall be the day, this shall be the Torah of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest. But then three, it says the priest shall go forth out of the camp. So I'm, I'm a little confused because now I'm wondering, okay, is he supposed to actually go to the priest or the priest? Yeah, Husha's the high priest. He was already outside the camp. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, it's bordering a line of like, does it say you're not, does it say you're not allowed? Does it say the, the person with leprosy is not allowed to go to the priest if he's healed? The yeah. Torah doesn't say that. The Torah says he must get approval that he's healed by the priest. Right. Yeah, who should heal them? You got to get us. You got to get a written scripture to come back to work. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm just saying it says for it says he shall be brought to the priest like he is supposed to go to the priest. Mm. And then it says the priest is supposed to come to him outside the camp. So I'm, I, I don't, maybe it's maybe both because what's the point? The point is the person to be good to go. I think mm -hmm. that's the main point. I don't mm -hmm. think I don't think we should get caught up. But this is what I would see. I would see the, 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 the Yahudim men who are stuck on the letter of the law. I could see them getting caught up on things like this. No, but it's supposed to be, you know, rather than, yo, guys, the point is, is the guy healed or not? I think that's the main point. Is he healed? If, if he's not healed and he came back in without approval, then I can see that, that be, that's a problem. You know, you came out of, you know, being outside the camp. We put you outside the camp, but we put you in quarantine. But you took it upon yourself to come out and you're not even healed yet. I would that that's something to be disappointed about. But if somebody's healed and they came outside to you, that's what I'm trying to say. So I think the, the point is the healing. So Yahusha healed this man, which is the miracle. Whether or not he's supposed to go to the priest or the priest is supposed to go to him is irrelevant. But I could definitely see a stiff necked priest getting caught up on that. Or you weren't supposed to move until I said so. Like, why are you getting mad about that? I just, I'm healed. <laughs> Shouldn't you get excited about the fact that I'm healed? Shouldn't you praise Yahuwah? So those are thoughts going through my head. And I'm sure there were, obviously, uh, we read in the book of Acts, there were a lot of priests who were, who were becoming disciples and stuff. And then there were those who weren't. You know. All right. We went through Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 and to 4. 1 to 4. Yep. Cross-reference that with Leviticus 13, Leviticus 14. All right. That's it. Shalom.